I was 16 years old and got a job working at uh, Kenny Allison's uh, shop, which is your son. And uh, there were two twin boys, Ronald and Donald. Right. And I didn't know your boys at all. I knew you, uh, and I knew who you were. Um, But they built, at the time, Legends cars. They were the only manufacturer of Legends cars at the time. I was, I mean, Legends cars has only had only been around maybe five years or less, and so I was still driving my black and silver S10. So this is probably I'm probably 17 years old, and I drove like the third ever Legends car built. So I mean, this is pretty early in the Legends car in the Legends car world. Um, I went over there and started working on uh, things with Kenny. And helping, he was just teaching me about how to use a torch and how to clean parts and how to weld. In the back of the shop, they actually built Davies Cup cars for Robert Yates. And um, and the uh, that was pretty incredible to go back there and see uh, you know the Texaco Havoline number twenty eight car getting a new front clip or getting you know a brand new car being built. Um, and so I, I don't know that they built all of the cars for Yates then, but I know that there were several of them back there always getting worked on. And so, um, and I remember, and it was in Salisbury, out, out up on uh, 70 or 40? Highway 70. Highway 70, right? And I just, I mean, it's literally uh, five miles from my house today. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, but anyways, I got, a, I got to know Kenny and Ronald and Donald. I loved them. I still uh, have my paycheck stubs and a printout of my first paychecks from them. Kenny gave it to me in a frame. Do you remember how much? It wasn't much, but it was enough. It was more than I ever made. That's right. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Okay. Pat got that ready. We went down to Talladega and did the uh, presentation on the back straight away. Uh, we gave Dale that. Yeah. The canceled paycheck for six <laughs> weeks. And the total thing wasn't but eight hundred something dollars. And I, Amy was sitting there at the time. I said, like, a little bit different now than it, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I, I tell you what, though, that eight hundred dollars. I mean, yeah. that's more than what you would have had. Now, what was he like as an employee? Well, uh, I think he did all right. Kenny, he talks about him a little bit. Of course, Kenny talks about all of them, but yeah. uh, uh, it was really unique the way that all transpired. Uh, Dale Senior called Kenny, and said, can you give Dale Jr. a job? He said, I can't do anything with you. <laughs> <laughs> and Kenny said, send him up. That's how he came up there. Talking about that, Dale, talking about those cars in the back to 28, uh, Kenny built some pretty good Bush cars at the time and quite a few good Winston Cup yes. cars. You know, he built a 30 car that, that uh, Michael Walter set on the pole at Richmond with, and you know, then they brought it back home and cut it up. And Kenny was close to Banjo because of my relationship with Banjo. But anyway, Kenny Allison was the first one to manufacture Legends cars. Yes. What happened, Humpy called me. They were trying to have that race at Charlotte. And Roddy Combs was building the cars at the time, and they weren't going to have the cars ready. And he wanted to know, could my son do it? I said, you'll have to ask him, not me. Well, Kenny agreed to do it. They finished the last car one hour before the race started at Charlotte. You know, the legend race with me and Bobby and all the old guys driving. But anyway, uh, Kenny Allison and Ronald Donald, Allison Brothers Race Car, built 780 legend legend cars. cars. And then another 75 framed after Humpy took it away from them. Yeah. Now it's 600 racing. That's it's Yeah, big. well, they, you know, it was a bad deal for yeah. uh, the, the Legacy car, which is being built now 30 years. The Allison Legacy. Allison Legacy car. They're still racing. They're still running. Pat does the whole series, and, uh, you know, they're really a good car for, for a youngster to learn to drive in. Better than a Legends car. I liked the Legends car. It was very, very unique to drive because it had a lot of horsepower and a little bitty car. But a Legacy car teaches you how to drive. Mm. And in order to run good in a legacy car, you got to have your gas pedal mashed to the floor. So I mean, it, it's uh, it's a little different, but it's not. Yeah. So um, the uh, rumor is, so I ran I the car that I ended up ri- driving when I was 16 was the third car ever built, and the rumor is that that car is still out there somewhere. 
I've heard that it's sitting in a building somewhere that y'all have. Either you own it, you own the building, or Kenny owns it. Yeah, um, Pat could probably tell you better than that, me, uh, uh, but it is still in existence. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> um, you know, we 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 have several cars in the museum in North Carolina Museum, uh, Mortal. Okay. And, uh, I don't know for sure where your car is, okay. but it's somewhere around. Somewhere. So, anyhow, I wanted to tell you, and you might have heard, I don't know, but uh, I started working on a project uh, here recently about the 1979 season. And you play a big role in that year. Um, and I wanted to talk about that. It's, it, But before we get to 1979, um, I want to kind of encompass your cup career to that point. You raced um, – for Banjo Matthews in the 27, a uh, beautiful race car, had a lot of success, run for different people. You raced in the Indy 500 twice, running in the top 10, top five one time. I think you finished fourth and sixth in the Indy yeah, 500. Yeah, fourth and sixth. Yeah. Best finishing rookie in that race for a long time, all the way so, to 93. All right, so we know today we know today what it's like for um, – a cup driver to go do that or or an or a, or an indy car driver to come do nascar what was the transition like back then was it was it totally foreign to you to go drive something like that no it really wasn't dale you know i i spent three years actually driving super modifieds and mobile pensacola and everything you know mm -hmm. i had a, a 1426 pound car with a three-quarter stroke chevrolet injected engine in it with a wing on top and if your belt was tight enough, you could run as fast as you want to run. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I loved it. Uh, I, I won a, a ton of races in, in the Super. Uh, and I just felt like I, I wanted to drive an Indy car. And it's unique because I'd see AJ and I'd say to him, when are you going to let me drive one of your Indy cars? Oh, you, you're a stock car driver. Um and 1970 at Daytona 500, you know, he was driving for the Woods Brothers, and I was driving for Banjo. And I said, uh, when are you going to let me drive one of your Indy cars? He said, you really want to do that, don't you? I said, yes, I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't want to do it. He said, I'll call you. Well, I heard that BS before, <laughs> you know. But anyway, the phone rings, and it was AJ. He said, come to Houston. You and Tony talking about his daddy, are going to get a car ready. So I go to Houston, and we go back in a warehouse, and up on the top rack here, this frame sitting there. He said, that's your car there. He said, get it down, and you and Dad put it together. So we got it down. It was a 1968 Eagle. It wasn't even a Coyote car. It was an Eagle car. And Tony and I put it, well, I didn't stay the full time we putting it together. In fact, I got cuss out about it about 50 times because I left Tony with a little work left to do because I went back to racing. Anyway, this car is the one I ran in 1970. And believe me, I had a rough time at Indy. What happened? Well, I went there and they had a driver orientation, rookie driver orientation. They told me when I went out on the racetrack, I better not go in the track. I better stay in those ribbles in the apron and all this kind of stuff. And A.J. told me, he said, do not run in those ripples. Well, USAC's telling me to run in the ripples. And they're, they're going to give me my, my rookie test. I'm, I'm getting ready to start a rookie test now. And I go out the first time, and I go down and turn one the ripples, and I spin out. You know, I get to bouncing all around. Dale can tell you. He knows he's been in them. He's been there. in the ripples. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, so then the war started. A.J., and you sack officials. Oh, I mean, it was it was terrible. And here I am standing there with my shoulder up around my ears, you know, because I, I, I wanted to hide. And when it got done, A.J. turned around to me. He said, you listen to what I tell you to do, not what they tell you to do. Well, I'm the only rookie that I know of or ever heard of that ran their whole rookie test without coming in. I went out the next time. And I finished the whole rookie test that time. Mm -hmm. and went, well, then, then it was pretty good. I, I, I ran some, and I, I got a custom car pretty good. 
And I kept hollering at AJ, I wanted some wings on the nose of my car. See, that eagle, that round nose with no wings. Everybody had wings on the nose. AJ said, you don't need noses on uh, wings on that nose. Yeah, I got to have them. So he took, <laughs> told the sheet metal man to build me some nose wings. Well, they did. Well, I go out, and this is another lesson that was very, very hard to learn. You better look at that wind sock and see which way the wind's blowing. Right. Because it very definitely has an effect on the car. Anyway, I spend 360 degrees going in turn three and hit the wall straight ahead. I don't know how fast I was going, but I hadn't slowed down very much when I started spinning. Anyway, I bit my tongue, and I was bleeding in my mouth a little bit. Not bad. I hit my knees a little bit, but I was all right. Well, A.J. met us at the Enfield Care Center, and when I came out, he said, you all right? I said, yep, I'm fine. I said, I bit my tongue. I had a little blood on my lip, I guess, or whatever. But anyway, he said, bit your tongue. How'd you bite your tongue? I said, well, just before I got to the wall, I said, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they took eight days to fix the car. They had to put a new bulkhead in and everything like that. My first time lap after the wreck was the fastest lap I'd run to that time. Mm. And from that time, it was clear sailing. Yeah. 